Hi, this is Corey, and here's a Navisworks training video on the selection tree. So, the selection tree is something we work with all the time when we're, we're in Navisworks, and there's a, a few things that we can go back and uh, figure out that will make our time in Navisworks more effective. Um, the points that I want to cover here today are the various levels in the hierarchy, uh, using shift click, setting our selection resolution, the tabs, and then effective navigation in the selection tree, some things that I've picked up over the years. So, jumping into Navisworks, selection tree is up here, and if you go to your standard view, the view, load workspace, and the Navisworks standard, I'm always used to seeing my selection tree on the left hand side. And we know at the base level of this hierarchy are the various files that have been appended to our NWF. Um, and they've all been created by some various authoring tool. So within each file, we have an object hierarchy. And this object hierarchy is dependent upon the authoring tool that we're working in. So Revit's going to have a different object hierarchy than CAD versus SketchUp versus Tecla. And also these are some older files from Revit that we that we're working with here. And the newer the newer objects we have the option to split up by family and type and then also determine whether or not we break it up by level. Um in in Revit it's a little bit interesting to see what is this thing actually based on? What is this first level, seventh level? fourth floor. That's actually based on how the, that uh, model was broken up in Revit. So this wall, for instance, it says it's on the third floor, but this is one of those exterior walls that goes from the third floor all the way up to the roof. Um, it just lands on this level in the object hierarchy. Now, what I'll say is that there's not any hard and fast guide to this thing, and especially with all the various different BIM standards out there for different companies. So it's up to the person running Navisworks and viewing the model to understand their particular object hierarchy that they're dealing with. Okay, so I talk about the... so talking about the levels of hierarchy Just open this thing up so I have some easier access to it. There we go. Lovely. So if I click on this this wall here, I can see that I can go down into three solid objects. And I'm not sure exactly what all of those things are, but one of them is is the overall wall, and the other one might be different layers of the wall. Um, it all just depends on how that thing is broken out. So here. The, the important point to know is that there are different levels in that hierarchy, right? And I can go up and down in the selection tree. So by first clicking on this, I go back up to the third floor, and then I can go all the way back up to the top level of this hierarchy. Alright, where this comes in to be more valuable in the understanding is when I select this window. So I know that this window, I can find properties about it at various locations. So at this object level, I'm seeing that it's a composite object. Its name is 78 by 54. This is the name is 78 by 54, and this gives the type. If I was to break this out, I have two different parts of this actual object. I have the the glass part and then the actual the sash for the window. Um, now the the point of this video is not to say that windows are broken up into glass and sashes. What I'm saying is that there's many different ways that the geometry comes in and gets organized. And it's up to you, the individual user, to understand how your model, what you're looking for, gets broken up. So if I click on uh, this window, and here I can go back through my my selection tree. Now, if, but if I shift click, if I hold shift on my keyboard and click here, what that's going to do is go up to my top level in the object hierarchy. In this case, being the architecture .nwc. And if I continue to hold shift and I click again, it's going to take me to the layer that that window's on, the fifth floor. And I keep going. I keep holding shift, and I can click on down through my selection tree. And if I clicked again, it goes back up. So I can cycle through that object hierarchy by holding shift. 
and that can be a very helpful uh, way to one, select back at my architecture level, or two, to navigate back on through the selection tree at all the various levels to get the actual properties that I'm looking for. Because if we go here, we get this is where I'm finding that the type it contains windows. If I was to continue to go down here, um, I may not get anything in my element that has the type that contains windows. Right? So this this becomes especially important when we're doing our find items and creating our search sets that it's just important to understand your data structure can't can't drive that point home enough so shift plus left click an important thing i talk about the setting our selection resolution so when i right click on this object that what this is going to do is set my selection resolution for the the whole the whole model that I'm working in at the current time so I can set currently it's selected to my last object and that's why every time I click on this it's going down to my last object now if I had changed this to the geometry now when I click on this it's going to go to the individual component part of the object right so here I'm clicking on this that's going to my composite part this is going to the solid if I was to right click again let's change that selection layer uh, selection resolution to the layer that hits down to my fifth floor and if I was to hold shift and click again it's going to continue going down to that uh, deeper in the selection tree so I usually like to keep it on the last object but it just kinda depends on what I'm looking to do and the results that I'm getting it's uh, much of it's a trial and error process. I don't have a lot of hard and fast rules. For anyone who knows me, I don't have a whole lot of hard and fast rules. One's to have fun in life and keep the eye on the prize. Next one here is looking at the tabs in that selection tree. So at the bottom of the selection tree, we have our standard, which goes through all this level of detail. Now compact is a way to just view the first two layers of our selection tree. So we have all the files and then the layers. Um, and again, that's going to differ depending on which authoring tool got used. Here's properties. Um, I'm not even sure how this gets populated. I don't use it all that often. Um, yeah, lovely. Um, and if I had a saved a selection set, now a tab goes at the bottom for a selection set. And if I had a search set added, we'll see that that has the binoculars up here to indicate that it's a search set versus a selection set. So we have different tabs here in the selection tree. Important thing to note, right, is that our Clash Detective has these same tabs at the bottom. So, oh, no currently, so I can't switch back and forth, lovely. Okay. So finally, just to go through some navigation tools in the, in the selection tree, um, a lot of times, so we're clicking through these, these objects, and I want to collapse this whole thing back up to its most base level. So what, what I do is click on here on the object, and then I hit the left arrow on my keyboard, and if I just keep doing that, it will eventually collapse back up to the standard selection tree. That's the fastest way I've got it. Uh, I, a lot of times I drink too much coffee, so it's hard for me to click on each of these little minuses. Uh, geez, look at that. But if I just hit the left arrow, that works fantastic. Fantastically, if we're using our proper grammar. So, and... So, like, if I wanted to close down this whole structure, I can go left arrow, left arrow, up, up, left arrow, left arrow. And that's how I can quickly get my selection tree back to um, a closed and organized level. So if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Um, this video should be posted on YouTube. And you can always hit me back at... The best email for this stuff is cory.mcdermott at gmail.com. Have a fantastic day and good luck in Navisworks.